Hi there and welcome to a new video in which we are going to be talking about parallax or actually infinite backgrounds that maybe you have seen in lots of these kind of endless uh, or runner games. Um, so in this video I want to quickly explain you how you can get this effect because it is easier than it may sound. The actual and best way of doing this because you may have seen some tutorials and the process may seem a little bit over complicated or maybe that they are not using the best tools possible so in this video i will show you the best best way of doing this so in this case as you can see this is an actual go project that actually has this infinite background um and how this works is that i just basically have a scene okay itself which whose root node is this parallax to the node okay that you can read right over there parallax to the now in previous go versions what you used to have was a parallax layer also. Sorry, um, um, well, you were basically used to have like many ways of doing this, um, but now basically you have everything in just a one parallax to the node. Um, and how this works is that basically first you create the root node, should be this parallax 2D, and then you just have to add one node, okay, which is the sprite node that actually has the, the background texture, okay? So you can see this is the, the actual texture that the image has. In fact, if I go to assets, images, and here I double click on the background, uh, you will see this texture that is just a square texture, but here you can see it is like some kind of rectangle. How do you get these kind of textures? Well, drawing them manually can be a little bit complicated because you have to make them loop perfectly. As you can see here, you don't realize that these are different images joined together you think that they are like just one large uh, image, but well, if you d are not into game art, um, well, you can just, most of the backgrounds that you can find out there on the internet, at least some of them, uh, you can make them infinite. So once you have your parallax 2D and your sprite, you have to set up a few things, okay? So in your parallax 2D, what you have, first of all, is a scroll offset, okay? So let's actually see these values uh, in practice. As you can see, this is basically how much your background is offset by default. This is an option that could actually be more interesting in a couple of minutes, okay? Um, because right now, just like this, it's not easy to understand. What is easy to understand here are these options under the repeat section. So the repeat size, what determines is actually exactly that, uh, how, how big are the repetitions of the background? So in this case, the repetitions have a width of 668 and a zero in the Y. Why? Uh, because I just want to make this a uh, map, okay, or, or this background be infinite horizontally because the camera moves uh, from, let's say that move from right to left. So I don't want to make it infinite also on the Y. If I wanted to make it infinite on the Y, I could put, I know, 500 and you will see that it's also looping um, on the Y. Now, why? 668 that's something that we're going to be seeing in the second uh now auto scroll this is basically the auto scroll speed okay and so this is in by default in minus 500 so this means that the background will kind of move to the left okay if it were a, if it was a positive number it would mean that the background would move right basically and you also have once again this speed in in the Y axis, but in this case, as you have seen in the game, we just want to move in the X axis. And now the repeat times is how many times the background is repeated by default. How they set it to three and not to five or not to one or to zero. Once again, we're going to be seeing this in a second. You still have more options such as limits, overriding, etc. But I believe that with just these two sections, okay, or even just the repeat section is going to be more than enough. Now, talking about the child, okay, once again, this is just a sprite with a texture loaded in, okay, with a, a background, okay, as simple as that. Now, uh, what you will see is that how you usually scale these things, if you go to a transform and you try to scale it, it is going to work just fine. So you can either scale here this root node, or you can also scale in or out the sprite, okay? So how this relates to the parallax. As you can see here, the repeat size, we have set it to 678 because the X scale, okay, is set to 0.75 and actually the Y scale also. So what happens is that here, this repeat size 
in 99% of cases, you want it to be, in this case, the exact same background size. Okay, and here it's actually 0.75, so not one. So it's actually 25% smaller than this original size. And if you do the, the easy math, which would be subtracting um, 1024, subtracting 25% of a 124, you would end up having 768, which is the perfect value. If I make this a little bit bigger, for example, 800, what we'll see is that there is a small gap in between them. Um, and if it's a little bit smaller, I don't know, 730, as you can see, they are too much, they are, they are too, they are a little bit together. And that's something that we don't want. So in reality, what you could even do is make this one in the scale. And now we can make the background repeat size, the actual size of the texture, which would be even easier. So 1024. Once again, just in the X axis. And as you can see, it does look good. So how, what do I do if I want to resize this? I can go to the scale of this and just make this a little bit smaller. Okay, and there we have the exact same result without having to do any kind of weird maths. Okay, but once again with this, we do have the setup, okay? Um, what else? Now, we do. I do have a script here because what happens is that the auto scroll speed changes as the game goes by because the game has progression. So the more the player survives, the faster the game goes. So the faster also this background scrolls, but the, the, the script is not doing anything else to the background itself. Now, what happens with the repeat times? This by default is one, but in most cases, if your texture is not too big, what happens with the repeat time being in one is that it doesn't look correct, okay? Um, because it, it is not enough for the background to loop correctly. But if you set repeat times to two, for example, you you still won't see it completely covering everything. What you have to see is that it covers both the left of the viewport, which is this green line, and the right of the viewport, which is this blue line. This will ensure that your background is always like going to be looking correctly. So as you can see, it loops seamlessly. And if you even increase these repeat times even more, you shouldn't actually see any difference or anything like that. Uh, but it's not really necessary, okay? Uh, well, it, you actually see it looping not correctly. Um, so it doesn't look that bad, but you can still like realize the transition between them. So this is a value that it's not really like something that you should really understand completely how it works. Um, what I'd recommend is that you basically try out different values and, 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 and reach the one that actually makes your game work. But the general rule is that if it covers the whole viewport, okay, the closer value is going to be the best one. Because you can see, well, yes, four still covers the, the viewport, five still does it. And I believe that if we use five, um, maybe it does work, but I'm not sure. No, it still not works. Um, so you may have to, to use the value that is the, 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 the smallest one, but that is able to cover both sides of the viewport the right and the left. And now what happens about the scroll offset? So if we set this to zero, the background will just start off right over there. So it's not like a super big deal, really. Uh, I just offset it just to uh, be like uh, in the center of it. But as you can see, when I offset it, like it kind of break a little bit. Um, so once again, here using this rule, uh, here, this doesn't cover the viewport correctly, so we have to write three. Let's give it a second, and here we should see it now. So, I believe that it's now because of the offset that we have set. Um, this value will basically determine um, when the background will, um, will actually loop. So, once again, this is a value that sometimes you have to play around a little bit with it until you find it that it loops perfectly fine. Um, so as we can see, if I play with these values, uh, I still don't see it like correctly. And the first thing that I will do is that um, I will reset just the scale, okay, of the background itself. Uh, because what, what I just realized and I wanted to explain to you this is that some sometimes people, when I scale, these nodes, okay, 
what happens is that well they receive a warning sometimes um or or something like that or i don't know why some people don't don't like resizing their their sprites no it's not correct but as you can see here is scaling the parallax to the node is something that in most cases you don't want to do because it's it's not going to actually scroll correctly so in most cases i believe that you will always need to have your scale at one one and what you can scroll uh, down uh, sorry you can what you can scale down are your different sprites so once again let's set this at 0.75 but once you do it you also have to modify your auto scroll values here uh, that i really were something like no sorry this value i didn't want to make it like that uh so i believe i can actually this i can multiply it by uh, 0.25 i believe sorry um i can actually uh, decrease it by i don't know if i can do percentage here like this so minus 25 percent nope but what i can do directly is do it minus uh 1024 times uh, 0.25 and there i have the perfect value and i also can see this background uh, is looping seamlessly okay it seems like as if it were a perfect background and also in reality here the scroll offset shouldn't be something that changes whether your background works correctly or not i wanted to correct that thing the only thing that the scroll offset will do is to kind of just modify the position of the node itself because as you can see here you do have the transform but you don't have position here what you have are offset uh as you can see it's, it's quite similar to node 2d dot position so for example here by default this is like super at the top i don't want that that's why i just basically lowered a little bit but it shouldn't really change how you how this behaves the only thing that changes i believe is where the background starts so here it starts at in this shape but if i want to start the background like in other place okay i would be able to do so but once again for 99 percent of cases i don't think that you will actually take advantage of this um so anyway and most of the other options are that if you just play around with them you will be able to understand them because for example there is another uh, one that is scroll scale but this is for those backgrounds that do have the feeling of being a 3d background when they are just plain images uh, in which you have different layers maybe you have uh, trees at the at the very top of the background then you have some more plants then you have a landscape at the very bottom of everything and everything ev every single element moves at a different speed which gives that sense of depth okay but well this is like the easiest usage for this and in order to create those more complex parallax well you first have to understand this so that's why i wanted to first explain this and then if you want another tutorial on on that a more complex background let me know now if you want to continue learning godot in the link in the description down below you're going to be able to uh, purchase my godot course with as you can see 4.8 an average of ratings of a, a, on in total of six ratings more than 30 students over six hours of content in which i teach you how to create the game that i showed you a second ago the original price is 45 dollars however a lot of times from the channel i'm giving out a coupon code that will give you this score for something like 11.99 or 12.99 so if i worry i will always keep a, a look at the different youtube um descriptions because i uh, sometimes give some special coupons that are not expired okay uh, that you can use and get the course at a huge discount uh and then i also have my own uh, udemy uh, unity course which has more than 21 hours of content so it's a much more comprehensive guide with over uh, 20 students it doesn't have any ratings because none any student have finished yet the course uh but well as you can see it is still gaining a lot of it is uh, actually helping a lot of students gain a lot of knowledge in Unity. So once again, all these links are in the description down below. If you are not able to afford them, um, once again, keep an eye on the channel and on the different video descriptions because I sometimes give some huge uh, coupon codes for you to use for limited time. So see you in the next one and bye bye.